something. There is one mediator between God and man. Scripture says, I believe it's 1 Timothy 2.5, and it is the man, Christ Jesus. But can I encourage you with something as you think about that? You are your own priest. I'm not your priest. You're saved. You have access to God just like I do. Now, if you want to use me as accountability, and I believe that's important in our lives to have accountability, I have accountability people in my life. But I'm talking about talking, about getting forgiveness of sins. Don't come to me. I got nothing for you. I'm going to point you to the one that can. Because you can go to him because of what Christ has done. And that's awesome. Because remember this, the people in the Old Testament could not do what we get to do today. Let that just sink in for a moment. The Old Testament people could not do what you and I have the freedom to enjoy at any moment. Father, in prayer. That's us. That's the privilege of them. And so when you think about it, to me, it's an awesome thing that he has made us priests, kings and priests, as you see this. And so you go on in verse number 11, it says, 11 and 12, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousands and thousands of thousands. That's a lot of thousands. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Okay. Um, I want you to picture that for a moment. Okay. I want you to picture... You know when I kind of did some math and I did some research because I don't trust my own math. John basically saw 100 million angels. He's basically like, I saw 100 million angels. So what I saw is this creation of angels shouting loudly and worshiping Jesus. And what was their song? Worthy is the Lamb. Is he worthy? Yes, he's worthy. Worthy is the Lamb to receive all power glory, honor, blessing. You're worthy to receive all of it. And we see that. They're saying worthy. And this is what's kind of I like about it. Chapter 4, remember they fell down and worshipped? Who they fell down and worshipped? Chapter 4. God the Father. Verses 1 through 12. Now who are they worshipping? The Lamb. Never forget that God does not share His glory with anyone but Himself. I don't believe Jesus is God. God does not share glory with with anyone but himself. Jesus, God in the flesh. The Father and the Son, and we'll see here in a moment, the Holy Spirit. God is a jealous God. He will not share his glory. So anyone that attacks the deity of Christ, that Christ is God, is going to have a really hard time with this passage. Because God's not going to share his glory. He's not going to share it. He shares it with only himself. And you see that, and how they worship there. And then you see... In verse number 13 and 14, they worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so that's all the angels. Verse 13 says, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And he said, That's great, but we can go. If we go right now, let me give you about 60 seconds worth of something real quick. Okay, I'll talk fast. You listen fast. We'll get out of here. Close it. Okay. All right. Y'all like, I don't believe you. All right. That's why Paul said a lot of times, finally, brother, and he wrote many chapters after that. But uh, anyhow, they're worshiping the Father, right? It says, unto the one on the throne and unto the Lamb. So now they're worshiping the Father and the Son. And I want you to see some. Remember the horns and the, and the, the eyes, the spirit there? I want you to get this. Who's worshiping now? Because before this, all the angels are worshiping, right? Who's worshiping and singing now in verses 13 and 14? All of creation. Every man, every woman that has ever been born or has ever been created. All of creation from the beginning of time to the end of time. All of them, like one massive choir, are singing, you are are worthy. Now you say, what's the big deal with that? What do you mean, every creature? What's the big deal? Understand. That's what it says in verse 13. In every creature. Why do you mention that? Because it's a fulfillment of Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 11. 
Philippians 2, verse 11, and I was going to quote it, but you know me, if I quote it, I'm going to mess it up. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And if you look at the verse ahead of that, it says what? That at the name of Jesus. You say, every tongue? What do, you, what do you mean by that? If you read this passage, what it says, those that are in heaven, those that are on earth, but it also says those that are under the earth. It means there's going to be a day even those that are in eternal torment, even if they're in eternal torment right now, there's going to be a day they still fall down on their face and say, you are worthy. And you say, Phil, why is that important? It's important because we have to seek the Lord while he may be found. Because you may not bow the knee and worship God, worship Christ today, or why you're on this earth, but there will be a day that you'll worship him. You'll acknowledge he is God. You will acknowledge he is Savior. I don't care who the greatest atheist that's ever lived, they will one day bow their knee to fulfill Philippians 2, 10, and 11 and say, you are God. You are worthy. So do it today. You say, Phil, it's Wednesday night, man. We're here. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Church attendance don't get you anywhere. Like to study the book of Revelation, don't get you anywhere. Probably maybe like me crazy a little bit, but you know, it's going to get you that way a little bit. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that if you don't worship God now voluntarily, there'll be a day that you're forced to worship Him from a place of eternal torment. When you read about the great white throne judgment, I believe they're still in pain and torment, and they're still bowing down at Him. They will bow. There will be a day they will bow whether they refuse on this earth or not. And you know what our job is? Just beg people to turn to him now. Just beg people, beg people to turn to him now. Because there's going to come a day they're going to bow. And you know as well as I do, if we understand hell halfway as much as Jesus talked about it, we wouldn't want our enemy to go there. We'd rather them bow now than be forced to bow one day for an eternal place of torment. Is he worthy? Thank God he is. He's the only one. He's the lamb that was slain, and thank God it says he stands. And we'll start looking at next week how he reclaims the earth. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the day. Thank you for the time that we could be together. And Lord, I say as the angels say, and Lord, as I'll say one day along with every person that you've ever created, Worthy is he that sits on the throne and the lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor, power and blessing forever and ever. And thank you we enjoy that all through the wonderful name of Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night.